guys are phenomenal. AJ Styles, and you're watching Red Oak Live. What is going on guys? Brutal Live back with another video and this is the Week in Review episode 11, I think. Or is it episode 12? I'm not really sure, but it says it in the title. But yes, this is the Week in Review where I set up WWE figures in a setup style for Raw and SmackDown. We're going to start off with Raw and as you guys know, I always state my opinion, what happened in the show, how I thought about the show. And I let me just start by saying Raw I thought was freaking amazing this week. Raw's been pretty weak lately and uh, this was a big bounce back for Raw. So starting the show, literally, first match they started off with a bang. Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman. I'm like, oh, another Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley. Stupid match, but no, this match, like, it started off freaking amazing, like, out in the ring, in the timekeepers area, out in the crowd. As you guys can see, I did expand my uh, crowd. I've yet to post a video on it. I will, but yes, um, that, that was a great match between Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. I know that's Apollo Crews, tending that to be Bo uh, Bobby Lashley, and then the best part, Braun Strowman, he basically like shoulder tackled slash speared Bobby Lashley right through the freaking Titantron wall. It was so sick. If you guys didn't see it, check it out on WWE's YouTube channel. This was freaking insane. I could watch it over and over again. It was literally craziness. He speared him from more uh, through like that side of the wall, but um, I just put it through there because there's already like an indent. But it was so sick. Great match. Great ending. And then uh, nobody ended up winning. It was a false count anywhere match, and nobody ended up winning, which I was totally fine with because that was freaking crazy. And then uh, Corey Graves saying, "You guys, you know what? I, you know what he said. It was freaking awesome. So surprised too on what Corey Graves said. If you guys don't know, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. But freaking insane there. I love that." Uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. I'm going to get right into this. Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch went up against Maria Kanellis and Mike Bennett, which was, or Mike Kanellis. And it was, um, yeah, it was, it was weird. I mean, it was a pretty decent match, pretty decent promo backstage. I enjoyed it, but it was weird when it come, when it, uh, they come out to the ring. Uh, yeah, Mike Kanellis was getting the crap beat out of him by Seth Rollins. Uh, and in the end, uh, Mike Kanellis actually did get pinned by, no, submissioned by Becky Lynch, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but Maria Kanellis, she just started blabbering on and like, pregnancy and everything I was I was getting so confused I was so confused I still am I still don't know what happened there but I thought it was sort of funny but again I'm so confused on what uh, Maria Canales had to say if you guys don't know what I'm talking about just again WWE's YouTube channel has all these little clips check them all out but yeah super confused still I am on that but it was pretty decent I thought it was pretty good Oh, uh, The Undertaker made his presence felt. There was a rumor all night going around that Undertaker was here, and he, of course he was, if they're saying there's a rumor. Um, uh, Drew McIntyre and Shane, were, they were in the ring, and they're like, we're not afraid of The Undertaker. We, get him out here. We'll, we'll beat him up and everything. And then right when, they, uh, right when the music hit, they ran outside of the ring, hopped the barricade, and then they were standing there during his promo, which was pretty decent. Uh, Undertaker's promo, pretty decent. Uh, I never really understand Undertaker's promos at all, if I'm being honest. <laughs> But yeah, it was pretty cool to see The Undertaker, and it was pretty cool to see how Drew McIntyre and Shane Man were scared of The Undertaker, which was cool. Uh, R-Truth and Drake Maverick. I'm loving this 24-7 championship thing. It's so great. Like, Drake Maverick's wife was there, and it was like, me or the 24-7 championship, and then Drake Maverick got both at the end of the night. He got his wife back, and he got the 24-7 championship. He did pin R-Truth backstage. And he got the 24-7 title back, which I'm actually kind of fine with because I like... Because R-Truth is already like a 9-time 24-7 champion, which is so cool. So I want to see him become like a 20-time. That would be so awesome. But yeah. Uh, moving inside of the ring, it was a moment of bliss. Carmella interrupted. And then Carmella's like, Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss is using you, which is obviously true. Come on now. Uh, Carmella, and then Carmella wanted a match with Alexa Bliss. And then he, she had to have pinned her in like four, four, five seconds. Literally, so easy. Uh, Alexa Bliss got pinned right away, and then Nikki Cross, when the commercial break, come back. Uh, Nikki Cross actually had a match with Carmella, and Nikki Cross picked up the victory. So what they're trying to do is, like, saying that Nikki Cross deserves all the titles, but Alexa Bliss, like, uh, manipulated her into thinking that Alexa Bliss... Uh, should get all like the spotlight after she wins all the matches, which is a little a little weird, but it is pretty interesting. I kind of like that. Two out of three falls match rematch here. Uh, it is Elias versus the Miz. The Miz ended up picking up the victory. Pretty decent match. Uh, yeah, it was kind of weird. They kept on saying uh, after the commercial break. After the commercial break, it was weird. I'm not sure if I'm the only one that noticed that, 
But um, yeah, they're like, oh, the third fall will happen after the commercial break. And they never announce the commercial breaks unless it's like five seconds before. I don't know. I don't know. I was just confused. I'm not sure if I'm the only one that noticed that. But yeah, uh, Viking Raiders and Samoa Joe versus the New Day. Pretty decent match here. Uh, Samoa Joe ended up winning with a Coquina clutch to Kofi Kingston, which kind of sucks because Kofi's the champion and that uh, Samoa Joe's his rivalry, rival and he lost. But uh, yeah, uh, nothing really, really big there. But yeah, Samoa Joe tapped or not tapped out. Uh, passed out Kofi Kingston, which was pretty decent uh, over here. This was probably the weakest match of the night if I'm being honest uh, Natalia uh, Versus Lacey Evans. That's not that's not intended to be Maurice. I don't have a Lacey Evans figure But yeah, uh, Baron Corbin just yanked the legs of Natalia dropped her down to the mat, which I thought was pretty cool uh, and then um, Lacey Evans with a woman's right pinned at Natalia best part of the night hands freaking down best part right here AJ Styles and the club man AJ Styles as a good guy was not really working out so well after he lost his title oh the club is good guys is terrible come on that nerd thing is so bad um and they changed it up they make them all heels AJ Styles and the club were heels by the internet I saw it coming all uh, the weeks like leading up to this I saw this coming uh, it was Ricochet versus AJ Styles for the United States Championship. AJ Styles actually pinned him. He was a 1-2-3, but then John Cohn uh, come out and told the referee, which I think is uh, I think it was Bennett or something like that. And then, um, yeah, Ricochet's foot was under the bottom rope, so that pin does not count. Restarted the match. Ricochet picked up the victory over AJ Styles. And then basically the same exact thing that happened with John Cena a while back, if you guys remember. John Cena and AJ Styles were about to go up against the club. Um... AJ Styles, like, supposed friends at the time, and then Styles turns on Cena, and in this case, Styles turned on Ricochet right from behind, and then it was just a huge beat, and I freaking loved it, because, again, as I said, AJ Styles' face wasn't working so good, the club face was terrible, oh my gosh, um, by face, I mean, like, as they're, like, as them being, like, good guys, it was not working, so I'm glad that they're all together as heels, that is so cool, and, uh, yeah, uh, if I were to rate Raw, I will rate it at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Now let's get into SmackDown, but yeah, again, Raw was freaking insane, man. I thought it was really, really good. Uh, and stay tuned right now for SmackDown. Ooh, what is going on, guys? I'm just kidding. I already did the intro. SmackDown Live! Set up here. We just went over a Raw. Pretty good show for Raw. SmackDown... Pretty decent. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Pretty, pretty decent. I'm not saying it was a bad show, but it was pretty decent. Raw was a million times better, if I'm being honest. I was just blown by Raw, blown away by Raw. But without further ado, I'm gonna state my rating at the end of the video for both shows. But we're gonna get into SmackDown in a setup style. So let's do it. Our Truth was interviewed backstage, and he said uh, that um. Drake Maverick, they were in somewhere in Texas, I think it was San Antonio, Texas, and Archer's like, yeah, they're having their honeymoon here, so I'm going to go find him and get my baby back, quote-unquote, the 24-7 championship. So I bet you guys can find something on Instagram, might already be up there. Um, our, our truth finding um, Drake Maverick probably on, somewhere on a beach maybe even or some somewhere like a hotel or something he's gonna pin Drake Maverick and get the title back but I could see something really funny coming out of that but that's pretty cool uh, it was Andrade versus Apollo Crews pretty weak match if I'm if I'm gonna be honest Andrade ended up pick the, picking up the victory kind of weak not gonna lie uh, a moment of bliss Alexa Bliss actually allowed Nikki Cross to host the show for some odd reason uh, and it was it was it wasn't bad, you know. Uh, and then it turned into a match: Nikki Cross versus Bailey, and Bailey got the best of Nikki Cross this time in a pretty decent match. Beginning of the show started off with Shane McMahon and Drew McIntyre special guests on the Kevin Owens show, and then Dolph Ziggler and ended up interrupting. And then Kevin Owens is like, "Oh, it should have been me, should have been me. We're done with that crap. Will you just shut your mouth already?" It was so it was so awesome. Uh, and then Ziggler's like, dude, join a hot, hot dog eating contest. And then Kevin Owens is like, I bet I could win a hot dog contest more than you've ever won even a match or something like that. But it was a really good promo. And then it turned into a match at the end of the night. Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler versus Heavy Machinery. Whoever wins gets added to the, tri it will be now a triple threat match at Extreme Rules. Uh, which was Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan versus The New Day. But now it's going to be Daniel Bryan, Eric Rowan, 
and the New Day. No, Dana Bryan and Eric Rowan versus the New Day versus Heavy Machinery. Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens. Uh, they're, they weren't friends in this match. Kevin Owens actually uh, took out Ziggler at the end of the match because Ziggler accidentally super kicked him. But uh, yeah, pretty decent tag team match at the end of the show. Of course, it was the main event. Again, Heavy Machinery did win the match. They're going to be at the tag team match at... Um, what is, stop, oh, not Stomping Ground. Extreme Rules, which should be pretty good. And, yeah, I really enjoyed that promo. Pretty good. Uh, it was Big E versus Daniel Bryan here. Uh, Daniel Bryan picked up the victory with a lot of help from Eric Rowan. And, yeah, I was kind of disappointed there. But, yeah, not going to lie. Uh, Ember Moon versus Mandy Rose. Couldn't really care less for this match, if I'm being honest. She hit a, a Eclipse on Mandy Rose and picked up the victory. I was never really the biggest fan of Ember Moon, if I'm being honest with you guys. Uh, this was my favorite part of the show, actually. Uh, Kofi Kingston. Flicking off Samoa Joe. It was just insane. What has happened to WWE? WWE has just turned heel, man. WWE has turned heel, and I freaking love it, if I'm being honest. WWE is freaking... Yeah, WWE is crazy. But yeah, guys, this has been the SmackDown setup. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, Yeah, this has been SmackDown. This has been Raw. If I were to write Raw this week, I would have to give it a solid 9. I thought it was a great show. You know, I'm not going to give it a full 10. I'm not going to give it a full 10. Because there was some weak stuff in the show. Uh, but SmackDown, I would have to give maybe a 6.5. Thought it had some pretty decent moments, like Kofi Kingston, I thought was good. And then the promo in the beginning, I thought was pretty good. But yeah, everything else was sort of bland. But yes, uh, pretty decent shows this week. I'll give it to Paul Heyman this week. Eric Bischoff didn't do the do better than Paul Heyman, in my opinion, this week. But I really hope you guys enjoyed the Week in Review video for today. Bretto Live! Out!